Section 13.1 is about right triangle trigonometry. Trigonometry is the study of the relationship of the angles and sides of a triangle. In this case, you see a right triangle here, and I want to point to this angle, angle theta. That, that symbol is called theta. It's the Greek letter theta. And it means that there's an unknown angle measure there. Remember that every triangle has three angles and three sides that make it up. And once you pick one of these acute angles, the A or the B, then that tells you what the sides are called. So in this case, if theta is the angle I'm looking at, the side that's across from it or opposite is called the opposite leg. The side or the leg that's adjacent to it is called the adjacent leg. And then the longest side of the triangle is called the hypotenuse. Now there are three trig ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent. We use SC and T here to represent sine, cosine, and tangent. And remember that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Back in algebra, we learned this mnemonic, SOKOTOA, to help us remember that. Now I'm going to fill these uh, three ratios in here with the same values that you find in um, SOKOTOA up here. So that is how you find the sine, cosine, and tangent of angle theta. You use those sides. Now there's three new trig ratios that you've never seen before. They're called the cosecant, the secant, and the cotangent. Now cosecant is the opposite of sine, so you're going to take this fraction and flip it. Secant is the opposite of cosine. Again, take the fraction and flip it. And the cotangent of theta is... Uh, the opposite or the inverse of tangent. And then down here you'll also see there's another way to write cosecant, secant, and tangent. Cosecant theta uh, is the inverse of sine, which is 1 over sine. The secant of theta is the inverse of cosine, 1 over cosine. And the cotangent of theta is the inverse of tangent, 1 over the tangent. On this slide, I want to just make sure that you're okay with the Sokoto idea. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so each of these letters stand for um, o and A traps and hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so ka, C-A-H. And tangent is opposite over adjacent, toa. This is something you need to memorize so that you can do sine, cosine, and tangent quickly. Um, you do need to make sure you spell it correctly. Here we see that the values of the functions, the three trigonometric functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, and the other ones that go along with them, those values depend only on the measure of the angle. They do not depend on the size of the triangle. So here you see two triangles, ABC and AB prime, C prime, and they both share this angle theta. So it's important to know that the ratio of BC to AB, that ratio of the opposite to the hypotenuse, is the same. It equals the same thing as the ratio of B prime, C prime over A. B prime. So another way of saying that is the ratio of the small triangle, this side to this side, is the same as the ratio of the big triangle, this side to this big side. So in this example, we're asked to find the six trigonometric functions of the angle theta. So here you see those six functions, sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. I'm going to write Sokotoa down here so we remember what that is and how to use it. And now we're focused on this angle, we're focused on the angle theta, so it's important for us to know which um, side is opposite this, which leg. So AB here, the leg AB is the opposite leg, the leg BC is the adjacent leg, and then AC is the hypotenuse. So since sine is opposite over hypotenuse, we're going to do 4 over 5. Since cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, we'll do the 3 over 5, and then tangent is opposite over adjacent. Now these other three are just the inverses of these first three. So we just take sine, cosine, and tangent, use the reciprocal, and that gives us cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Here we're told that the cosine of A is 2 over 5, and we want to use that information to find tangent. Remember cosine, the ka, is adjacent over hypotenuse, so if we say cosine is 2 fifths, then that means 2 is the adjacent side and 5 is the hypotenuse. So we could use that to construct a triangle, a right triangle. And then I'm going to pick some angle, and we'll call this angle A. So adjacent to that would be 2, and the hypotenuse would be 5, which means we need to find this um, leg over here. 
Now we could call this BC, we could also call this little a, because it's across from the a, so it's, uh, it's leg a. And then we could use the Pythagorean theorem. So the hypotenuse squared is 5. The b here squared, we don't know the a squared, so we'll start by subtracting 4. So 21 equals a squared, take the square root of both sides, and a equals the square root of 21. So now that we know the a, we can find the tangent of a, because remember tangent, toa, is opposite over adjacent, so the opposite is root 21 over the adjacent. Here we're going to look at how to solve a right triangle. That would be the process of finding the missing measures of a right triangle. Now, there are six things in a triangle that you need to know. There are three angles and three sides. In this triangle, we know the 90 degree angle, the 35 degree angle, but we don't know angle Y. We know the side Y, because it's the opposite side, so we call that little Y. But we don't know the hypotenuse, and we don't know uh, side X. So we have to find those three values that we don't know. Well, the easiest one to find is angle Y. Because since this is 90 degrees, and the other two have to be 90, because a total triangle is 180, then you can take 90, subtract 35, and find out that angle Y is 55 degrees. Now we have to find one of the sides. I'm going to go with this leg first, uh, little x. And to find that, we need to incorporate one of our sine, cosine, or tangent ratios. So I'll put Sokotoa here to remind us. So first, you've got to pick an angle, 35. So I'm going to say, which, which ratio incorporates the 35 and uses this opposite leg and this adjacent leg? Because you have to use one, one side that you don't know and one side that you do know. Well, opposite over adjacent is tangent. So I'm going to set up the ratio of tangent of 35 equals the opposite over the adjacent. And so now I can solve this for x. So plugging that into the calculator, we find out that side x is 7.0. We're told to round um, to the nearest tenth, so 7.0 is what that rounds to. Then finally, we can find uh, the hypotenuse here. Um, uh, you can pick either one of these angles. Again, I'm going to pick 35. And so that would be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And that would be cosine. So cosine of 35 is adjacent, which is 10, over the hypotenuse of z. To solve this one, you've got to get the z alone by multiplying the z on both sides and then dividing by cosine of 35. So in the calculator, you'll plug in 10 divided by cosine of 35. And you get z is 12.2. And so now we found the three missing sides of the triangle. That's called solving the triangle. Here's another right triangle we're asked to solve. The difference between this one and the last one is we don't know any of these acute angles. But we do know three sides. So again, I'm going to write Sokoto over here to help us. And now to find one of the angles, I'm going to pick angle A. We'd have to find one of the ratios that would incorporate two of these sides. Well, if I use A and I use the sine of A, sine is opposite, which is 5, over hypotenuse, which is 13. So I can solve for A here by getting rid of the sine. And the way I do that is I take the inverse sine of both sides. So these will cancel, leaving me angle A is the inverse sine of 5 over 13. And you can type that into your calculator. And we find that angle A is 23 degrees. Now finding angle B then is fairly simple, because again, you know that these two have to add up to be 90. So you can say 90 minus 23 is 67 degrees. And that's what angle B is. Here we're going to look at two concepts, the angle of elevation and the angle of depression. Angle of elevation is when you're looking at something straight ahead, and then you look up into the air, you create what's called the angle of elevation right here. So it's the angle from your line of sight to something up in the air. Likewise, the angle of depression is the angle formed from something in the air, like a plane, down um, to a place on the ground, a line specifically that's parallel to the ground. So this would be the angle of depression. This would be the angle of elevation. We can use those concepts to solve problems like this one. 
We're talking about a ski lift that has an angle of elevation and a vertical drop of 2,900 feet. If we sketch a picture of the ski run, so imagine there's somebody up here with skis, getting ready to come down. And we're told that the vertical drop is 2,900 feet. So it's vertically in the air, 2,900 feet. This is the angle of elevation from the ground to the person up in the air. And then we want to find the length of the run. We want to find the length of, in this case, the hypotenuse of the triangle. So what trig ratio can we use for this angle that uses the opposite leg and the hypotenuse? Well, that's sine. So we'll solve this trig ratio, multiplying both sides by x, and then dividing both sides by sine of 20.2. So in your calculator, 2900 divided by sine of 20.2. And we get about 8,399 feet is the length of the run.